Hello everybody, this is Shane Armin Rowe, and today we're going to install the early access preview version of MUDEC here on the ASUS Ally. Now we're gonna show you all the different steps involved, show you a couple of catches that you might encounter as you go, and of course there might be some surprise emulated gameplay in here. So once you uh, download the EXE file from the Patreon account, you will have some prerequisites here to install. It's a lot. It's it's a lot of scary stuff looking, but don't worry about it. Uh, all this stuff is safe. It's kind of funny to be able to watch this installing on Windows when on deck, on the Steam Deck, it is actually a much cleaner process. You don't see all this GitHub stuff installing. You don't see the scary DOS boxes. Everything is just sort of double click and watch it go. So yeah, so we do have some dependencies. We have to restart in order to get some of the dependencies to kick in. So we'll go ahead and exit MUDEC, open it back up. Now, here's the fun part. MUDEC currently is a Patreon-backed project, so you will have to log in with Patreon. This is sort of the complicated part. It's going to get you a key, an MUDEC token. Now, you're gonna click this allow four or five times and it's not gonna do anything. It's working, you just have to let it sit there, but there's no indication that it's actually working. So we'll just sit here. I know I clicked it four or five times because you know I'm like every other user. If it doesn't work the first click, click it a hundred more times. Eventually it will come up. So get the key. I'm gonna obfuscate the key even though it should be a one-time use thing. And we're gonna go ahead and paste it into the MU deck installer and there we go. So now it's actually downloading extra files, all sorts of good stuff. Now easy mode is probably where you wanna start if you're not familiar with MU deck, but we're gonna go ahead and use custom mode because I am coming from the Steam Deck where I've got MUDEC installed and I'm pretty well versed. All right, so you're gonna choose which drive you want. This is a little bit different than Steam Deck. You're gonna pick which drive you want. Make sure that you have your SD card already prepared and working beforehand if you're gonna put it there. Asus ROG Ally, nice. And then you can choose which emulators you want. Um, the only one I really don't care about is the secondary switch one. Okay, so here we have Configure auto saves. If you want the game to automatically save and resume when you go in, you'll want that. Here's retro achievements. Now listen, if you don't know what retro achievements are uh, and you love achievements and trophies and all that, you really, really need to look into retro achievements. I've got a cool video I'll uh, paste up there for you. Now here, I just have problems getting my login working. I don't remember what my login password was. So we're just gonna skip this for now, but we will pick it up later. Okay, so now configure the aspect ratio. I like my aspect ratios to all be exactly the way they were. I don't want any hacks or widescreen nonsense or trickery going. I don't need any shaders. I want it to um, be pretty much as is. But you can, of course, do whatever you want here. Again, I'm gonna keep all the shaders off. Now, there's many more themes available for Emulation Station. I've got a really good video on that one as well. We'll choose one from the list and we're ready to go. Now, this is gonna take a while to configure here. Uh, oh, time for a game break. Ah, uh, yes, the Warriors played on the PlayStation 2 emulator. I love the Warriors, great movie. This is actually a Rockstar game, Rockstar Toronto. A lot of people don't realize that. I love the Warriors. This is just the sort of all out arcade brawl. There's a whole big storyline going on the baseball theories versus the orphans. How great is it? If you're a huge fan of the orphans, you can't miss playing the PS2 version. We'll just let it sit here and run for a little while, then we'll get back to what we were doing. I mean, we can't just have all work and no play. It makes Jack a dull boy. Body slam, love that. Did a really good job. For a PS2, it looks great. All right, now back to the installation here. Um, I've cut this down. I've speeded it up about five times. It's really about a minute 38 to get everything installed, but I didn't want to just jump ahead. I wanted you guys to see everything that it was installing so you knew what to expect. And you are going to see these weird pop-ups, right? These are all runtime distribut redistributables, um, all sorts of stuff that the tools need to run. All right, so it says the installation's complete. That's great. All right, so now do you want to set up cloud saves? Now, I'm not a cloud save guy. At some point, I might cover it, but I'm going to turn it off for now. So you have two ways of using this package. You can use Steam ROM Manager, which injects your games into Steam, or you can use Emulation Station DE, which is what we're gonna use because I have a lot of games and I don't wanna clutter up my Steam OS with all of that. 
Okay, so here is the main menu. There's lots of stuff to see. That Manage Emulators needs an update, and I did not do it. Oh, time for a game break. All right, this is Ein Hander from uh, the original PlayStation 1. Gorgeous game. I literally blew my mind when I saw this on the PlayStation 1. Not only do you have these beautiful sort of sprite-based uh, players and, and ships, but you also have the cool 3D rendered backgrounds. Great music. I believe it's CD audio. Unbelievable game. That always creeped me out. All right, back to work. Let's go back into MU deck here. And we have some stuff to do still. Again, if that you ever see updates available, you'll want to take those when you can. There's a BIOS checker here that will help you make sure that you have the right BIOS files for those advanced emulators. But I really want my retro achievements working. Um, I, I love retro achievements. I think this is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. And I want to make sure that I have these up and working. Now, even though this is going to tell you that it was successful, I still had to back into RetroArch and type the uh, items in myself. By the time you watch this video, it'll probably be fixed. All right, so typically speaking, you launch Emulation Station when you want to play your hub of emulation. So I'm looking for the, the shortcut and it's not anywhere around here. That's one of the odd things about EmuDeck. It will hide all the emulators from you. So normally you would think, well, each of these emulators should be somewhere in the start menu, but it's not. So I ran this the first time and it's telling me flat out, here's where you need to put your ROMs, but you don't have any. So what we'll do is I've got a Steam Deck loaded with all my favorite ROMs pre-configured using Emulation Station and Emu Deck. So I am going to use a tool to go over there and copy my files across the net. Oh, time for a game break. A little something new for you here, Ratchet and Clank, Tools of Destruction for PlayStation 3. This on the Steam Deck did not look this good. So this was one of the titles I definitely wanted to put in front of you. Um, it does dip into the 30s, but for the most part, it plays a lot more fluid. It looks really nice. Uh, I figured having this on the Ally would be, I might actually play it if it's not stuttering all over the place. So it looks great. All right, fun time's over, back to work. So here I am, I am using SSH to get to my Steam Deck emulation folder. And of course, locally here, I am going to copy all of my folders over from emulation off of my Steam Deck into emulation on my Ally. Now this is directory opus, it's not free, but you see this unattended errors and all this other good stuff. This is all compliments of directory opus. So if there's any file collisions, it'll handle them for you. It's pretty much point click and then you can walk away and then every, you know that everything will make it when you get to the other side. All right, so we're gonna abbreviate this because <laughs> I, I don't wanna spend like uh, an hour doing that. But so now that we've got all of our ROMs and BIOS files copied over, let's go back into emulation station again. Oh, 220 games. Now that's a little more like it. And this is just one of the many themes that you can see and use uh, with EmuDeck. Now you're seeing some tearing here and that's because the refresh rate of the Ally is higher than that of the Elgato capture device that I'm using. That's why you're seeing weird stuff. And you'll also see that sometimes during the emulation of the games during game time. Now this is what it looks like just out of the box. It, it looks fairly boring until you get to this thing called the scraper. Now the scraper is gonna go grab box art and screenshots and movies and all sorts of stuff. This can take a lot of time, but fortunately you can do it in batch and it will just skip anything that it doesn't recognize. But you can see here, we have an absolute ton of systems. So this is something that you would like set overnight and then go to sleep or do them one at a time, pick your favorite systems and go. And you can see we have a lot of options here. Let's just grab one, Bruce Lee on the Game Boy Advance, one of my favorite Game Boy Advance games. We are going to go down and hit scrape for just this title. And this title will come up with a hit and then we'll decide if we like that, we'll accept the result and it will download all of those 
graphics and everything else. Then we're going to hit save and apply just to make sure. Now look, now Bruce Lee has a whole deal. It's got box art, a cartridge. It's got a little preview video. All of this stuff is compliments of the scraper. So let's go ahead and go into Steam ROM Manager. Oh, time for a game break. Yeah, everyone should recognize this. This, of course, is the second God of War on the PlayStation Portable, a notoriously um, hard system to emulate, at least emulate well. You can see here we stay pretty rock solid in the 60s the whole time. You can see how great it looks, how smooth it looks. This is some top-notch emulation. This is something that I would definitely actually play. You know how it is, you put a whole bunch of ROMs on, you never play anything. This is something I might actually play. So I'm a huge fan of the PlayStation Portable's God of War. This is a particularly ugly scene with all the environmentals and nonsense going on, which is why I left it in. You can see the FPS doesn't even dip. Looks great, very smooth. I love it. Okay, back to work. Steam ROM Manager is the tool that lets you inject parse and inject games from your emulators into Steam, the application. Now, I don't do that personally, but I do like to have Emulation Station injected. So here we have a couple of glitches along with our major emulators. Uh, I've previously installed all of these into Steam OS already. So here you can download the images, whatever, change images. Then when you go back into Steam proper, you'll see that the items that we added will show up in your library. So let's take a look. And there they are. Now, obviously the civil contract, that's a glitch, but you can see Emulation Station right here. And by the way, Emulation Station is designed to be run through Steam. It does a whole bunch of configuration setups for you. I, I, rec I recognize that you can just run Emulation Station and maybe flip over to gamepad mode on the Ally. I, I would recommend running it through Steam. That's what the developer recommends. That's what I'm gonna recommend. Okay, so this should look fairly familiar to you. And again, we have all of this missing artwork for our systems. And look at all this other stuff you can do. I mean, you really need to examine the menus a little bit. So we have two different scrapers we can scrape from. Both of them have their limitations and their pluses. Screen scraper for a dollar a month you can get an account which will give you basically unlimited screen scrapes. If you do not use a paid account, you are going to find out that after you scrape one or two systems, you're gonna be out for the day and you gotta wait for tomorrow. Pay the guy a buck a month, at least until you get this thing scraped down. Trust me, you'll want to do this. All right, now that we've got our scraper set up and we don't have any real limitations, now I can set up a couple of systems to scrape on mass. And again, you won't have to like stop in case it doesn't mean to match or there's a problem. It will just keep going and keep going and keep going until it's all done. So you have game one of 220. No, don't worry, we're not gonna scrape all 220. But we are gonna show you what it looks like to scrape a couple of them. And again, this is a sort of set it and forget it, right? We missed eight games. We'll have to go back and find out what those were, maybe rename them so the scraper will find them. Standard emulation nonsense, but it is what it is. Okay, so now we have our artwork and our, our box art and we have videos. Here's a little Bagman, I love Bagman. Uh, see, you got a little preview video, it looks fantastic. I really like having all of my emulation in one central. Oh, time for a game break, bah, bah, bah. time for a game break. Ah yes, Cruisin' Blast, only available on the Nintendo Switch. And while it plays nicely on the Steam Deck, uh, this is pretty much the full meal deal. Uh, I didn't have the frame uh, I didn't have the frame rate counter up for this, but I assure you you can see for yourself. It's absolutely gorgeous, super smooth. Doesn't drop even when you get a lot of stuff going on. Usually when you boost like that, you see some frame rate drops. Outstanding. One of my favorite games by the way, favorite racing games of all time right here. This is fantastic. It's sort of a combination of so many things. Daytona, a little burnout in there. Okay, back to work, I guess. Okay, so we're going to go back into Emulation Station. And again, this is how you get into gamepad mode. Uh, let's see, so let's, um, let's see, what are we gonna do here? Uh, 2600, I uh, didn't scrape any of these things. There's a lot here and you could spend a lot of time. I mean, look at the numbers, 400, 300. I have a lot of games on here. I have a lot of games on here. 
So I'll tell you what we're gonna do. Let's real quick, one of the biggest problems with the Steam Deck is the terrible touchscreen, which is normally not a problem outside of the fact if you would like to play some Nintendo DS games where the touchscreen is a necessity. Now, I love pack picks. This drawing, crippled looking uh, Pac-Man is very appealing to me. Unfortunately, doing this uh, on the Steam Deck is not as happy as I would like it to be. So let's take a look. I've got a nice little stylus here, cheap little stylus. The idea is you draw Pac-Man, he comes to life, you guide him around to eat the ghost. There we go, I finally got one to work. Oh, I lost him already, typical. Draw another one, he eats the ghost, and you draw walls to drag him around and force him to eat the other ghost, or you lose him off the screen. Obviously, it's been a while since I've played Pack Picks. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. But you can tell, it, it cracks me up what some of these, some of the ones that it will take, and some of the, I mean, I should have taken that one, right? Some of the ones I tried to do them backwards, I tried to do them slantways, sideways. Oh, there we go, I finally got one. But there's a timing thing involved with getting that Pac-Man to run around the screen. But what you really need to know is forget about my terrible Pac-Man drawing skills. The screen is very, very good for touch, right? And so I've got, I've got a stylus here. It's working great. I love it. I love me some Pac-Man. Okay. Well, that looks great. The touch screen works great. We got a lot of scraping to do. Well, there you have it. Here's yet another one. I hope you enjoy looking at this. Uh, MU deck, obviously it's in early access. You're gonna have to pay if you want access to it early, but uh, there's so much to see. There's so much to do. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm Shane Armonroe. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys know what to do. Thanks so much. And we'll be seeing you next time on the ASUS Ally. Take care.